Hey guys. Hey guys. Dave here at DPSIO. Uh, just giving a quick rundown. Uh, we had Scream conclude here recently. Uh, and you guys were semi around at the end of our big show, our three and a half hour show there. <laughs> um, about me building these. Uh, these are the new Banshees. This is like a. Well, this is still spec four, but this hasn't really progressed. These did get flown. Um, just yesterday, in fact, to test these out. We were kind of anxious at the close of the night to really get these out there and fly. Um, they did fly. Um, they look really good. They suck. There's really no other way around it. I, They suck. They're not... These are better. I'm trying to find these in a way that they actually fly with out the anhedrals. I want something plain like the original Banshees are. But this taping idea, which I thought was going to make them cool, giving them a tailplane... It ain't gonna work. They don't like it. They're it. They they corkscrewed horribly um, in this baseline like this. I tried to like the tape up here. No big deal. This one doesn't even have it, but it didn't matter. It was the tape back there that did it because I think the the flapping just it's too much and it's hard to keep it stable. So I guess they're gonna have to be revert back to freedom back there. Um, and they do get straighter once they have the anhedrals, but ironically, it didn't actually change their flight plans much. So they're still around the same range, perhaps a little bit longer than the average Banshee. The, the average Banshee is really close in, probably, you know, no farther than, say, 10 yards away. Um, so we're still looking at these being a close range support aircraft, the close support aircraft. Um the other ones that we flew during Scream that are so far in the box actually did a lot better and made us question these variants like this that got to fly, especially that one that actually has the strakes in the back back there. I got to get rid of this box. This box is totally horrible. But these here, these flew extraordinary. These took its range to a whole nother level. This is, this is what made me think that this was actually going to be better. And apparently... The key is not the tailplanes, but the tails. So, I mean, if I can pull something like this off where they get both, I mean, that'd be ideal. I'd love to see that. Probably not going to happen, but I'd love to see that. Um, the extension, by extension, these planes are going to be, at least for the time being, they're going to stick with their roles. I was questioning whether or not they were going to, and was fully prepped to bring Goblin back into the role instead of having it do... It's um, Lytro roll that it's got covering now, in which case I'm still thinking it's going to change because Goblin does take a medium throw by definition. It doesn't really fly any better with a Lytro or not, so I don't know. Yeah, we got a solo show. Hi, guys. I didn't know you were watching. <laughs> yeah, um, I, these suck. Uh, these are better, but they kind of suck. So I'm just thinking... Uh, I don't know where I'm going with them. I just, I, I think I'm going to try to keep them without the anhedrals. I think I'm going to keep them without the tape. And hopefully they turn into something. I don't know if I'm expecting these to be, like, grandiose. I don't know if I'm going to do this double. Me and Mark were talking about this the other night. <laughs> you suck it. I don't know if we're gonna, I'm going to do something that actually has... The, the the extra piece in there, me and Mark were talking about this, about actually giving it a fin with the tailplane. I mean, it's a possibility. But I don't want to go too rafter here because then Mark will get all mad all over again. Hey, that plane doesn't suck. Hey, you're calling it? No, it's not like a rafter. You suck. I don't need all that crap. So I'm going to take these out. It's going to be free. Probably make them tails again. Um, and I don't know. I don't know, but we'll see. The testing will continue, of course. I'm I'm glad they kind of resemble Vengeance, though. I I, I remember seeing Vengeance. Boy, that was pretty cool. And the other thing, but the other piece of news, if I want an import, you heard me talking about that, didn't you? You said something about, like, okay, if my planes suck, or, like, I build all these long rangers, you got the short rangers, I'll, I'll source out the long rangers, you give me the, the short rangers. Hey, okay, fine. If I've got to go that route, I'll go that route. That's fine with me. I don't care. Maybe I'll import it. In which case, you guys better be ready for like as 
whole bunch of these things. I mean, like that diamond, that diamond right there. I mean, hell, if I can't get it to work, you guys get it to work. But I'm warning you, it's a little bit complex. Anyway, so I'm not going to build much more that suck. You better watch out. So the new thing here, I took these over to Office Depot the other day. Um, these are our roundels, in case you hadn't noticed. It's a sheet full of them. It's now this is upside down. These are the glossies. This is just their test sheet to make sure it fit. But these, and I've got a whole bunch of them, are the Averys. And Avery does make a, like the smallest sheet, I think is a three-quarter inch. I can't remember what these are. I can't remember the numbers, but I saved the prints. So these actually are stickers that could just come off and be applied. And all of a sudden, we have roundels on our planes. And I will be doing this. They're a little bit off, but they're, for the most part, really cool. Um, so I'll be doing these to pretty much all of my aircraft that are flyable. And hopefully you guys will be inclined to do the same. I've got, I ordered from Avery 25 sheets of these. And there's like, what did they say, 156 on each? So needless to say, I've got scores of them. So these these will be like pretty badass. It'll it'll be nice to see them with that. It, it, but it opens up a range of possibility with this stuff too, because I do have a template saved also for the rectangular ones, slightly bigger for like the bombers, the transports, um, the roundels. I figure one for each plane, so you'll have the one on the top wing, one on the bottom wing. Um, I mean, this also has OAE you were describing before. There could be patches. It could be squadron symbols on here. I'm very seriously considering doing something like that. I don't know how big that's going to turn out to be because this is probably about the maximum size that you can have. Um, but yeah, this is good. This will be great. Um, really cheap and easy to get. I figured, like, why not? Why the hell not? I don't know why the hell we haven't been doing this. It was a lot easier than cutting and pasting them as it did before. But hey, whatever. The point is, though, is now. It could be done, and I'm really kind of excited about that because I've wanted roundels on these things for the longest freaking time. Longest freaking time. Mark, I am glad you got Spider to fly indoors, but you need to take the puppy outdoors, man. Dude, you put a staple in it and flew it indoors like it should? Well, gee, captive. There's, you know, nice controlled indoor currents. I mean, you seen that guy, the paper airplane guy, John Collins? He's great, but still, I mean, anything could be happening indoors. Let, let's 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 get them outdoors and still see what they can do. I know you have weather. That's okay though. We, we, we'll get outside. We'll get some flying done. Talk to me about that. You will be taking pictures of Hunter OA. Good. See, we need more pictures from people. I'd like to see some flight pictures, but you know, <laughs> rain, rain go away. Yeah, I mean, like we got. Like, you guys are obviously welcome. Get on IFPAC's Facebook page. Post up some of these shots. Post up some of these videos. Whatever you got there. Um, OAE, if you're trying to get rid of, get away from your uh, instructable strife, <coughs> um, you can you go right ahead. You know, um, post them up on a YouTube page. You had a YouTube. You probably still have a YouTube page. You, you probably haven't used it in a long, long time. I was going to video a couple of these flights, and I'm glad I didn't since they turned out to be just horrible. Um, I'm so disappointed in this. These are exciting to look at and yet terrible to fly. I can hear Mark laughing and I can't even hear the audio. But yeah, uh, please do get some pictures up for us. Um, Mark, you should start us an Instagram or something like that because I'm not inclined to do so, but I mean, we could. When Robert was wanting to get involved, you know, something more than a chat. You, if you've had rain go away, I mean, like, if you've had, like, periods of, you're saying it rained again today? I mean, you flew indoors, but whatever. I'm, like I said, I'm taking this out. I don't know why I'm doing this live, but let me go ahead and do this live for the hell of it. This way you guys can laugh some more if I screw this up like I just did because I cut into the wing. Man, I should never have done this this, this quickly, but it looks so cool. Sometimes I will forgo like, you know, practicality on looks alone. You know, this is why, you know, we're just, you just buy the hot planes. Everybody just buys the hot planes. I know what you're going to say. I could just tear these off, right? No, not going to do, oh, it rained again. Of course it rained again. 
Oh, OAE, you said it's an early prototype. How, when you say early, what do you mean by early? And how old is it? Is it like, is it a couple years old, three, four? I mean, I imagine it's not too terrible old. I think I've seen Hunter on the list, but I don't remember how far back it goes. Then you'll have to forgive me. I don't have a point of reference in the files right now because I still haven't taken the hard drive in to get fixed. It'll probably be tomorrow. And that's all the updated stuff. Mark, you might have noticed, like, you've been looking at the sheets with that stuff. We were checking them out the other night, and they're not updated, and that's why they're not updated. Because now they're all on that master sheet, which is what I've been updating, and, well, now it's destroyed. <laughs> so, nothing was transmuted to this new computer when I got it yet, because I intended on using it as my spare drive. Needless to say, the next time I get the spare drive, when I get the replacement, it's going in the tower. The diamond, oh, the diamond, this thing right here? Yeah, does yours have a fin? Does yours do? Like, like, oh my god, check it out, I built one on a notebook paper. Sometimes it's fun to get back to your roots. Yeah, I'm, I'm obsessed with these. Um, lately, I've been trying to make a whole bunch of them out of these square sheets. Mark, you just did that crap. Like, the, these are two planes made out of square sheets. Come on, a little bit different. Um, I got the Wasp, too, but yeah. I should have installed it. Well, what was I supposed to do? I didn't know. It's like a freaking accident. Yes, a freak of nature because cat is nature. Okay, whatever. Still. It was like having all of my, having all of my, you can't tell. Maybe you can hear that. These things are heavy, okay? They're pretty damn heavy. And I'm pretty damn sure three, four, maybe five of these crashed down. Yes, I am. Three or four of these crashed down on the hard drive. So that's why it's destroyed. Diecast metal planes will do that every time. Yes, I really do think you should get on that plane a day thing. I mean, okay, I get you don't have the space, but you need to build your force up. Dude, seriously, OAE, you got to tell me how it is you do that. Of course, hmm. and never mind. You know what? I'm sorry. I shouldn't be asking that. I know how to do it. I just never do it. I could be, you know, I, I don't have many things pointing to Javelin, many things pointing to Banshee, many things pointing to even Phase 2, 3, or 4. So it's not like you Google Phase 3 and, oh, look. The best paper airplane in the world. <coughs> it comes up right away. I didn't say that. But you know what I mean. God, this is a pain in the ass. Why don't you tell me, why don't one of you guys point out that I probably should have done something this, this horrible. This horrible. I mean, this plane is going to come out like one of Mark's if I don't do this right. What the hell? I, I, I seriously get the feeling I'm just going to be cutting this thing right off. Sorry. I don't mean to be quiet on my show because I'm not trying to do this, but this, if you guys get into your paper airplane folding, you know that it just takes all of your attention and you kind of zone out. And I'm trying to zone out without destroying. <gasps> I got it. I got that piece. It's taped two places. Well, you need to build. You've got planes that you could design and stuff like that. Or, I mean, fresh designs to go on and stuff, dude. You, you're like, yeah, you're chomping at the bit. You should go. And besides that, you don't have to build them like this. You don't have to build them all. Just build the bodies. Roll the bodies out. You need to get back in touch with your, like, Swallow and with your Firecat and stuff like that. If you build a body, stick them into one box in Pryfly, they won't get destroyed. And you can tow them really easily to wherever it is you move to next in another month. Sorry, I had to do that. If the spirit isn't yours, or you, did you like you modified it? You, you uh, did you like make it your own? Did you? Is it your take on it, or is that even your name for it, or is that just? Come on, come on. This really makes me mad though, because this plane is so hot looking. And yet it flies like a, I'm not gonna go there. I'm not gonna go there. But it does. It doesn't fly like that. It flies like a freaking corkscrew. If you'd see it, you'd understand. I mean, it literally just. Ugh.
I know, right? You, you get to doing a certain cut types of cutting here, and it's like an amazing amount of stuff that or me memories walking down memory lane reminding you like oh i need to try that oh i i used to do that or blah 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 or like mark's here like i'm itching man well yeah well you know you could do something about it you know there we go that one's free god it's so embarrassing to dismantle what would have been what could have been what should have been and it's not you know what could be the problem here is my exacta might actually be getting a little dull. And again, apologize for making this a little the show a little bit dull because I should be going into more stuff. But that actually was basically what I was trying to get at was how the Banshees fared during Scream. Um, most of them did what they should. And again, I'll probably be keeping them on as my close support planes. Um, I'm going to try to get those videos out there, those how-to videos for all y'all. Like, okay... What's close range? What's medium range? What's long range? Or you were asking me what a dead was, you know, the, the deception and defeat of enemy air defenses, which is basically, like I said, the decoy planes. So basically what that thing is, is just your striker, your long range striker. It's a replacement or a clone, I should say. You just want another plane to do that. So when you're in combat situation, that plane's coming. Your, your opponent thinks like, oh, he's about to strike me. They go after that. Then you send the real strikers after them. That's essentially what the dead roll is. Mark, you're building now, aren't you? You went quiet. You're building. That's good. I hope you are. See, this thing should be a totally different creature with the tail up. And this is apparently, I'm going to have to do this. Am I going to keep the anhedrals? Yeah, why the hell not? I'll keep the anhedrals. Um, I don't know why. Getting stuff ready. You gonna come on with me? You gonna do your thing? I mean, I know we didn't say this was show night, but oh, right, he's there. You're here. Uh, how'd you know I was coming on anyway? You get an alert, man. It's crazy. I can't use that. I need my other. I can't. Just, I was trying to use the round scalpel, and I just about cut my finger right off. I gotta use a fatty. Not that real fatty that you got, because you got those uh, hands, but. I know stunt planes, man. Seriously, I like building stunt planes, and I like hearing about the stunt planes. But sometimes I remember on the YouTube channel another new Vulcan. Jesus, dude, I love it, man. I love it. You have so many versions of that thing. It's so cool that it's worked its way through the ranks and, and so many different variants. That's that's just hype. I love that. I like picking on Mark. You're like phase seven. When are you gonna be at phase ten? Blah 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 blah. Whatever. That's all cool. Um, no, uh, like, dude, so many. Like, I remember getting it on YouTube. Like, this was a while back. I can't even remember which channel I used. It might have been Ivpax. But I talked with John Collins through there, and like, I, I I respect what he does for our hobby, our sport, whatever it is you want to call it. Let's call it a hobby, obsession, whatever. Our wives would probably disagree, but. Like I did also say, like this, you know, I don't, I didn't even meet him with malice or anything. I wasn't teasing him, wasn't taunting him, but I did mention this. Like, it's not like I, I respect what you've done for our hobby, but it's like there's nothing you've really done that's anything overly special. You wrote the book, sure. You've been on TV, yes, but these planes that you build, any one of us could build. Like a stunter that returns to you, like a boomerang. Hell, I did that when I was eight years old. Again. I don't mean disrespect. I'm just saying it's, it's I'm glad he's putting a face to it, but there are so many of us that have done these same things. I can turn around and make one of those. I don't want that one. I don't need that one. I retired that one. So wait a minute, wait a minute. Does that mean it's the 57, 50, blah, 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 the 30th variant? You're running out of names to do it because you've done ultra meta Vulcan. I mean, dude, you should just go ahead and go with like number sequences and stuff like that and stick with it. Like your hyphen 30 there, dash 30. Yeah, because Mark just said that 52 and boy, you're not going to be far off for very long in the first place. I always wondered what I was going to do if I got that high. I never intended to make phase that high though. I didn't think I expected to get to phase eight. And phase eight is going to be nothing special. It's just going to be micro-sized so I can have an aerial demonstration team 
phase eight is going to be really weird. I'm going to, when I build phase eight, it's literally going to be like probably just a three, a basic three micro sized to be carried on a mothership, which is apparently what we're going to do. Like KIA is done. Um, fly them and have like 15 built for a six, four to six plane team. And then the 15 that are built is just that group is just going to be like, okay, so it's either going to be a four or five or six plane demonstration team. And then I have the extras as backup and that's pretty much going to be it. Like I'll only ever have 15, maybe 20 phase eights. Then I'm going to be going on to phase nine. Then what you going to do? I'm looking at phase nine right now. I'm not exactly sure what it, well, okay, I'm sorry. I think I know what it's going to be because phase eight is going to be something else. So, yeah, I, I've got it. Where do you do all your testing? Do you do testing indoors? Do you take stage one? In IFPAC, we have the testing stages. I don't know if I've ever done a right or actually talked about it. We do like testing stages, and simply because, like, one is just the simple, like, you know, you fold it and you fly it indoors, and then you're able to fly it in a bigger stage indoors, then you fly outdoors. I mean, you know, your last stage. And for the record, I do not consider indoor flights as your first flight. You have to get it outdoors. When you build the first new design right here and you get it completed, that's your rollout. I mean, it's completed. It's a completed aircraft. That's the rollout. But if you throw it inside, that's not first flight. First flight has to be outdoors. Keep that in mind. But just saying. Um, in any case, uh, yeah, you, where do you do your testing? Because that's, you know, like, I mean, really matters not. But I just wonder because, you know, Mr. Rain over there can't can't get outside for, you know, two days in a row because the second day is going to rain. And yet you live in sunny California. I'm assuming you've uh, tested that. I've looked into some of the foldable flight stuff. I mean, only because he linked to you. So that, of course, gives inroads to us here at IFPAC. Well, you're an event, you know it, but what I mean is, is like, it's not, oh God, I love these stickers. Um, by the way, I don't have any, we don't have any PAFRs <laughs> about exactly rules and regs on exactly where these are going to go because this is the first time we've ever had these in mass. Um, maybe I'll send y'all some sheets, uh, although it really is cheap to get these. I could share with you guys the the thing online through Avery that shows these made. And if you just order yourself some of these sheets, it do it cost me eight bucks to get like 25 of these. And this is enough probably to fill every one of your birds, which is what I intended to do. But I highly recommend it because this is cool. This is the way I wanted to go. And trust me, every one of my birds is going to get these. That's the whole reason I printed out 10 sheets to start. I'll go fill up the rest later. And even if they suck, they're going to get roundels because this is the way it was supposed to be. I highly recommend, if you're going to do this, I do recommend the two. Um, if you want to go three, that's up to you. But one on, on one lower wing and then on the opposing, well, I can't, the opposing top wing, which is how I'm doing it. Left port up, starboard down. You can do it however you want to do it. That's how I recommend we do it. And, I mean, like sideways, when you do the bigger ones, we're going to keep the kind of like regular Air Force stuff. If it's the rectangular ones on the bigger planes, it can go on the body. I don't really see the point of putting it on the body. But when I write the buzz numbers like that there, I haven't coded this one, combat coded it, so it's not at a base yet, but it would be back here. And it would show the base and the number of this one, which is 25. But it has our logo in between. So... That's what covers the fuselage on the comp on the fighters. You guys, again, do it all you want to. I highly recommend you put it on there, though. I mean, they do belong to IFPAC, so. And you don't ever take any videos of that, though? Like, do you, do you have any videos? I mean, you have tons of how-to videos. But do you have any videos of the flights? I mean, because it'd be kind of cool. I know you want us to build. I mean, and that, obviously, that's cool. But I'm just saying, like, It'd be cool to see some of your flights and your yours too. Just because so many people, I mean, like people, different people fly different ways. I've given my planes to so many people and I always end up like, Mark, you know this. 
I mean, I've given this to other people just around here. And it's like random, random people. KIA's flown mine. My kid has flown mine. And it's like, they're different. They just, people don't throw the same way. Even though you, you could just tell them like, just throw it as hard as you can. Javelin. Okay. Yeah. You got a plane like Javelin flies like a rock. <sighs> Damn it. I said it. Um, you got a plane that flies like that. Sure. It's like, give it a baseball throw. But like these others, everybody has always got, I think they think when you get a hold of them that they want to be like so delicate with them. And it's like, no, don't be delicate. Throw it. Yeah, whatever. It doesn't matter. But I mean, I get the, you know, I definitely get that other people should throw them. And this is why I got to, I understand. I got to get my how to videos up there. I will. I will. I will. But mine's more of a production. Um, See, this roundel is going to be way too small for a plane this large. It works for them. It does not work for them. I'm going to have to upsize. The big ones, by the way, the big ones are going to get roundels on the wings, just like the small ones. It'll just be a bigger one. So I guess I'm going to have to order some more sheets. But the rectangular ones are going to go on the, the body somewhere. And what's cool about this, you are going to like this, OAE, because, again, you, like I saw some of your patches and stuff like that. Um we can write things on their sides. We can put stuff, you know, squadron markings, wing patches, stuff like that. If you can get them on stuff like this and they can go on here, they'll go really good. Because I seriously, seriously want to get the 333s on board. Because the Mad Ducks are cool. I've got the design. I'm holding it on the, the computer. But, well, I'm holding it on the drive that I can't get access to right now. Um, <laughs> but I do want to get that on there. And I... Everything from the 333rd bomb wing is going to get the Mad Ducks, or at least the heavy bombers will. I haven't decided whether or not my fighter bombers or medium bombers will. But again, um, Avery is the way to go, and if you really want to do that, I can share those. Um, hell, I could send you the sheets if I want. They're, they're not that expensive to get if you want to get them yourself. Uh, how the roundel goes, again, totally up to you. I just recommend you put one on the bottom and the top, and on your bigger ones on the side. And whatever else you want to do, you can do. I mean, sure, you can go all out and draw on them. But I think it'd be cooler to actually put some, like, you know, nose art on them. I do want to put nose art on my bombers. I don't know. Naked chicks? Maybe. We'll see. Probably not. Probably just something like, you know, Cloud Dancer or something like that. Something cool. The only things holding it back. Foldable flight is not really, are they, he, it, whatever it is, um, they're like an offshoot. Do you know them? Is that how you got yours up on there and like enjoying his plane as well? I mean, I like to try to make everything, especially at our impact page. I do, or the, the YouTube page. Um, I have tried to make it so that through that page, we're kind of like a hub. And you could get to anywhere that has anything remotely related to paper airplanes on the YouTubist. So, like Y13, dude, Ben is crazy. I've definitely, I started talking with him just a couple of days ago about the, like his tech that he puts on there. Thanks to, you know, Robert reminded me that like you guys were, he and him were part of Hangar 13. And I looked at Y13 stuff and I was like, okay, this dude's far out. He's got some cool stuff. Putting all the uh, straws on board like we used to do and then like adding notebook spirals in there so you could like create movable canards. That's some pretty cool tech. Of course, you have to have a plane this size and this strong to be able to support it, but he talks about how they're not that heavy, but still great ideas. By the way, this Banshee actually is really cool. Um, spends most of its time. Again, I flew every Banshee. Uh, Spends most of its time flying with its wings like this. Because, of course, even a plane such as this, the wing ratio is bad. So this thing is probably going to get the treatment. Um, probably going to end up having to stick some kind of structural enhancement on this to keep the wings from doing that. This straw is too small. I'm probably going to flatten out a regular straw, and since the weight of this thing is so great, I'll probably staple it into the Dale 
leading edge here and there while maintaining the, I'm going to maintain the freedom of that, even though I'm actually going to take it away. I'll probably staple it here and here to keep the wings from going up to see if I can get some more glidability. Chances are I'll end up taking it out. I've done this with a plane before and it turned out really horrible. Like it didn't like the fact, like this one would enjoy this. If you take it away, it sucks. So I'll probably be taking that back out, but it is what I plan on doing with this one. And we'll see where it goes. I don't know though. I mean, possibilities there. It's just something to look forward to. I will, I will cover those test flights. What the hell is he talking about? Oh, anyway, um, I know, and I, I think there's a few people. Like, I remember getting some of some of the earlier, the earliest videos that I've had. And I'm sure you've done it. Robert's done it. Like, when are you going to get some freaking tutorials up? I'm pretty sure KIA, definitely. And I'm pretty sure Mark has picked on me about, like, um, when are you going to put a tutorial up? Uh, I'm working on it. I'm working on it. I could just put a bonkers tutorial on there about, like, hey, um, here's a stupid plane I built when I was eight. What do you think? I mean, I can give you one now, but I'm not going to tell you how to build the flying bus because Mark's Team Supreme. <laughs> Tell him, ask, ask Mark how to build Draco. He can put that one up. Uh, me, on the other hand, I'm, I'll am i probably give you something. Like I said, I think the first one you can look forward to, and hopefully I'll get it out there perhaps even this week, will be Lance, uh, my interceptor. Um, it's nothing special. At least I don't think it is. Hell, some of y'all have probably built it. Oh, well, I guarantee you some people have built it. But um, keep in mind that I built this thing when I was like eight a long, long time ago, and I retired it a long, long time ago. Um, it made it into the Great Paper Airplane War, but it was pretty much retired by the end of it. So I think I built the first one in 83, and it was retired by 86, because I did have the arrow in an intermediate... I had two interceptors during the Paper Airplane War, and Lance and Arrow did it, but Lance... The, the war was pretty much Lance's combat swan song, and then Arrow took over the guard until Javelin came out in 88. But Arrow still got the job and stayed in the reserves for a little bit because Javelin had... Dude, I tested Javelin for the longest time. I mean, I didn't really have it where I wanted it until about like 91. Maybe 90. I can't remember. It was at least two years of testing. So... Cool. I anticipate that, That'll be cool. I'd like to see that. Um... I assume your interceptors are flying like interceptors should, right? This is probably a stupid question, but, you know, straight. <laughs> they do fly like straight as could be. Because Mark there just put, like, the. I don't know if you watched the show, because it was three and a half hours long. <laughs> we have seriously got to cut those shows down. Um, that he put down that tri, he made that new trihedral, really cool, but he did learn. Like I learned so long ago, when you bihedral it, which is essentially an X-wing, that just makes whatever plane you have go straight. So, now, again, with an aspect ratio that is short. If it's a deep aspect ratio, yeah, you're going to change things. I mean, Vampire's got a bihedral, but it's a stunter, so, eh. Um, yeah, I'm assuming the, your interceptor goes straight, and it, you could turn anything into an interceptor if you put X-wings on it. Come to fact, um, Mark, I was going to tell you about this. Uh, what are my thoughts on the Banshee here? Okay, that's what I figured. That's what I figured. One of my thoughts on the Banshee was to actually give it... Well, I can't do that. Well, that's what we talked about. We're probably getting into having to do that. I mean, we might have to take it out of YouTube editor and give it to some video editor. It's a hell of a lot better than the YouTube editor. It only allows you to, like, chop it in half at one point. And again... I hate to say it, but because I'd rather chop the one we just did since it's three and a half hours. But that last show, we're probably going to have to leave it because I don't think there's any way to pause it. There might be a way to pause it. I'm going to have to sit there and watch through it to see. Uh, and then we could cut it. Maybe we could at least cut it into two shows. But the YouTube editor only lets you to cut it into one. Of course, if we get two shows out of it, maybe we can split it again. So I don't, I don't know. 
I don't know. I'll see. I'll see if I can do that. I'll have to do it soon before anybody watches that and go, what the hell happened to the show? Uh, yeah, we should definitely do that. We got to watch future shows and make sure they're in the 30 minute to hour range. Tops. I mean, you know, this YouTube freaking internet generation is all like, you don't get your point across in five minutes. They don't give a crap no more. <sighs> Whatever. I mean, I'm already extending this into 35, but that's only because you guys came on and I'm trying to, you know, cater to you. I would have ended this like 20 minutes ago. Don't get me wrong. I got what I wanted out and whatever, but this is interesting. So, uh, yeah. You didn't record it. Of course you didn't. So the Interceptor will have strike provision. See, you're able to do that with so many of yours, and it makes your squadrons confusing. I was like, I said, this is why you should have kept, you should keep Edwards. Then you should keep Stearns. And you should have whatever squadrons you got that have two planes in them, Divvy that crap up and have the one plane at Stearns and go back and put the other ones at Edwards. It's not a sin to have two bases. I know. I'm sorry. I hate doing it. It's like, because it's your bases. You can do whatever the hell you want. But like, most of the rest of us love having multitudes. I mean, look at the Japanese Air Force. Look at the Russian Air Force. Look at the American Air Force. They all have multiple bases. I don't know. To each his own. However you want to do it. I don't care. I'm just happy you're playing and flying. But like, dude, it would make it life a little bit easier because you got so many planes. Yeah, dude, Mark, yeah, you're right. We've talked about that. We should probably do it on something with a more more uh, glorious video editor, right? Like Twitch, so we can do more manipulations. Yeah, we should probably do that. Again, though, if, if what I was thinking of is working, maybe we could split up the three-hour one. One time. Split... Maybe the first hour, because there does seem to be a lull and when we switch. Split the first hour, take the other two and a half hours. God, was that show three and a half hours long? Take the other two and a half hours, and then once it becomes another video, we can split that one. Maybe. I don't know if that's going to happen or not. I think we can. I, I See, our problem is we're going to have to sit through three and a half hours of that crap to figure out whether or not it's going to work. I know Twitch is based on streaming in general. I mean, again, this is what we're doing, but still... It's like, holy cow. Dude, OAE, I got to challenge you to actually put up some videos. I want to see a video or two of your birds flying. I want to see what these test flights are like because I'm anxious to see what your planes are like because you're the creator. I mean, yes, I can build them and I can fly them, but this is me. I don't even, like, the last time we did that video tutorial a while back about you, we were building the planes that you were making or your birds. What was it that we built? A Turbo Meta Vulcan, I think? I still have it, but, and I've got Warhawk, and I've got a couple others. I have the Owlet. I know that. Um, I think I just started building them up, but whatever. The point is, though, I want to see the creator fly, because you know what your plane is supposed to do. You built it the first time. You test flew it. You had the idea. Then when you flew it, you knew what it did. So it's like, when I fly it, is it going to do the same thing as yours? Because maybe your interceptor turns out to be my striker. I don't know. But that's why I want to see. I'm sure that's why you want to see. And I'll give you another flight day or two. Like my like our videos, we did fly the Warhawk for you. I did not fly Vulcan. Uh, the Vulcan we built. Um, I can rectify that when it's not raining. <clears throat> yeah. But, you know, <laughs> if, if you got rain, you got rain. What are you going to do? Boom. Yeah, people are used to watching long shows, especially out of us. If you've watched any of our shows, yeah, they get ridiculous. Three and a half hours, Jesus Christ. I mean, baseball games last shorter than that. Anyway, dude, you we played on Nintendo, dude. What was it? Bases loaded. How long did that take? 15 minutes? Man, if only real baseball games take that long, I'd probably be more interested. Whew. But our shows, man, Jesus. We get the point across in Denzel. But we're doing interesting things. It's just, can we keep the public interested? People like OAE out there? Sure. You know, foldable flight? Maybe. I got to cross-reference and talk to that dude and see, like, you know, hey, I'd like to try your planes. You want to try my planes? Blah, blah, blah. I wanted to see, like, OAE, I want to see. It'd be cool if I could see that you have, like, your MUP is great. I want to see that thing. It, does it fly good? You don't experience too much vibrations in the airframe? The wings don't wiggle too much carrying them because I know you've been testing these things like crazy. I'm I'm sure you've 
probably made the box to the point where it's aerodynamically feasible enough that it doesn't create drag or too much gra any gravity weight on the wings themselves or the plane itself. So I know, I'm, I, again, one of the ways I can test it would just be to simply fly it myself. I've done something like that, though. I had... Uh, I had the fa I called it the ice, which was basically the phase one because when it first started, it was a phase one C. It was my cargo airplane, so this was before um, block two was made and before the phase two came out. Um, the the suffixes used to just relate to what they were. The bomber was the phase one B. I didn't make it a prefix like it is now. So the phase one B was the bomber. The phase one C was the cargo plane. So I had taken phase one C and put engines on it. So it got the one, you know, phase one C E. So it was ice. Um, but I put four engines on it. They were basically Pisces, the, uh, power stability cylindrical units that I add on that we add on. Um, yeah, basically it's just a paper cylinder, but I wanted to make it sound cooler. So they're called Pisces, but it goes with the fact that again, like a little cylinder unit, especially if you make it wider in the front and taper it, it is a very basic form of an engine. So they were all tapered. It was all like having engines. It forces the air in and spits it out faster. Um, that plane did do great with those on board, but it was, you know, a big plane. So with your MUP, it's not, it, it allows the air to bypass. No air is getting in it, but I, I'm interested to see like, okay, so the carriage of them, there's no weight penalty. There's no drag penalty um, stuff like that. Boy, it'd be great to have a wind tunnel. Mark, we seriously need to build this wind tunnel we were talking about. I am very, very anxious to try to get one of those going. I would love to do that. Oh, you posted up just net. Great. Phases do not fly the same. When when Dalton first tried to fly the phases, he could not get it right. He couldn't get it right. I think it was because, again, you're scared when you get another person's bird. You get grab it, you're like, okay, how am I supposed to throw this? And like you, you know, if you feel it. You know yours. You always know yours. I and mean, when you get another person, you're like, uh... I mean, yes, I can just tell it. Dude, throw it like a football. And you can, but... Man, the phases, I've given them to them. And sometimes, it's like, it takes... It takes you guys figuring out the fact of how to build my phase. And then screwing it up. Or making it better. Whatever it is you do. <laughs> it takes you guys building your versions of them to figure out whether or not that plane is good. So... Yes, they all basically fly the same. I mean, most of mine fly the same. But that's only because I've got like, you know, 120 of them right now. And I've weeded out the ones that didn't fly good. So you never know that. So anyone you pull down off the line right now is going to fly the exact same way as the other one. But still, it's not like I've got like, you know, 80 through 90, every single one, and they all fly good. No, that's not the case. I've probably thrown away 82 and 86 on the way to finding out that the rest of them were great. Javelin, yeah. Javelin pretty much flies the same you can go and check out the forums. I'll check out the forums after the show. I don't want to do it during the show because, well, the show is live, and again, I don't want to keep it from getting boring or something like that. I'm not doing three and a half hours. I'm trying to make this like a good, a good old episode of Star Trek. I'm not doing any sound bites either, Mark. Not doing them. Not going to do it. Not going to do it. I thought about it, but I'm not going to do it. I mean, I could do some funny sound bites, but I'm not going to do that. I mean, I'm already doing stuff like this, like, and in other news. <laughs> I was trying to avoid that. I'm telling you. Yeah, but all of, again, mine fly, but it's because, you know, extensive testing. And OAE knows this. OAE, like he said, a lot of his, a lot of the ones he talks about, he always says like, okay, these have been tested. These have been tested. And I believe that. It which also makes me wonder, like, sometimes, do you, OAE, do you have enough planes to go with combat? Because, like, sometimes... You're you're so into testing. It always makes me wonder whether or not you uh <laughs> whether you actually have enough planes for combat, you know, at any one given time. Because like you could have these three here, and it's like, well, that one's in testing. That one's in testing. That one's combat capable. Yeah, if we went to war right now, he'd back us up. I think I'm gonna keep this rudder area here. This is not typical of these new Banshees and this new spec. Um. You know what? No, I'm not going to keep it because this is not what I found that they like. So I'm going to take this off. But I'm going to make this one a little less extreme than the other and see if we can get away with it. Matter of fact, I'm going to make this straight. 
to follow its tail. Again, can't test it, will not test it. But believe me, I'd rather have the tails because I'm interested in these thin codes. Also, also, I suppose this could be part of the news. Look at this, 45 minutes in, I'm finally going to get to the other part of the news. I did tell you about the round L's. I highly recommend you get the round L's. I'm going to keep touting this because you really should do this. Um, a label maker, though. Um, for those of you that have less than attractive writing, and I'm not pointing out anybody because so far I think everybody's writing that I've seen looks pretty good. Um, but when you put the fin codes on, if you don't like the way yours looks, get a label maker. Uh, I have a label maker. I haven't used it, but now that the round L's are out, I'm probably going to start using it so that your fins, I mean, okay, it's added tape, so it means it's added weight, and that may be a good question as to whether or not you're going to use it. I don't think too many birds are going to be affected by the added weight, especially if the only place you can put it is the rudder or the anhedrals. If it's a fin like these, yeah, I might have to write on these because these are really flimsy. I don't think putting another piece of tape on here, but then again, a banshee's got so much weight up here that I don't think it matters. So a piece of tape, again, with the coat on here, maybe not a bad idea. I don't know. I'll give it a try, even though these two are still carrying tape weight in the first place. Where do we get them? Um, you have to order the the small enough sheets of the Avery ones at Avery's website. I can give you the number if you need, and you can even use the template. Like I said, I can make the template available to anybody who wants to use it. Um, I can't remember. I'm extending the show. Uh, let me see here. So the drag, OAE, the drag is not that affected. That's good to know. I mean, again, because... I was, I, I mean, I was legitimately curious because I know the Mups are big and boxy. So if you have a sleek design, they're obviously going to add some drag. I just didn't know what kind of drag. Here it is. Okay, the sheet, this particular sheet is, they call it the Presta 94503. It's the smallest, it is the smallest version of these. I, I'm checking this out now. Uh just to make sure I get this right for you. They have, well aware Avery's got a whole bunch of stuff. So, and they obviously have the little stickers and they have the little rectangles. There's 154 of them per sheet. I believe they're only a half inch circle. They come in, yeah, like I said, 54 per sheet. I've got a bunch of them. Because they also have the three quarter inch circle, which is apparently more popular. You cannot print these on Avery site online. Because Avery's got a lot of things that you can, you or they call it the U-print or WePrint. They'll do it so that when you order them through them, it'll come straight to you printed. They won't do these small ones. The next size up, they will do. But they won't do these small ones. I just took this to my local office place. Uh, but yeah, they, they come in at size. I can give you the template or we can share it on the Avery site, which is where I have it. And I have the rectangles. The rectangles are the, also the smaller versions of the address labels. Their you know, address labels are pretty sizable. They're like about two and a quarter inches long. These are only about an inch and a quarter to an inch and a half by like a half inch. And the template I'm using is going to be able to put two of the IFPAT flags, rectangles, on one sticker. So you will have to cut them, but they will give you the two that you need to put on either side. So I haven't printed those up yet, uh, but I do have the templates made. They're ready to be printed. So... Uh, I'm also, I've also got two different sizes because I'm not sure which one I want to use if I want to use the smallest rectangle or the next size up because they've got a various differentiating size, but it's at the Avery website. All this stuff you can do at the Avery website. As long as you've got the template for our flag and roundel, you can do this. And again, if you don't have it, I can get it to you. Um, yeah, that's where it comes from. And that's the number. So, Yeah, I'm just getting started. I am not getting started. I'm telling you. Like I said, glad you guys are in there. Robert popped in briefly. I don't know where he disappeared to. Or maybe I didn't see him. I don't know. Oh, the M25 is the one? Okay. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, like I said, you could print it. Wait. That's probably delayed. So I answered that question. No, you can't print the one from the site. I think you can print the rectangular one from the site, but not the, the smaller round L. The smallest round L. If you want to get that bigger one, like I said, that you're going to need on the big planes, which I'm going to do. I'll get it. It's a three-quarter inch. I'm not going to get as many. 
because we just don't have as many bigger planes, but this is too small for these big size ones. That's tiny. I'm not going to do that. These are for the combat planes. This is for anything you build that's small. The bigger ones, they can print the bigger ones online. It, it starts at three quarter inch circles. Um, I think almost all the rectangles are available. I'm not sure. But again, just, just do go on Avery and check it out. Uh, you'll be able to straighten it out. So the M25 is the pod that's boxy, but it grabs them up. Okay. Okay. So th that's the difference. All right. But neither one of them, like you said, so neither one of them cause enough drag. All right. That's cool. That's cool. So anyway, yeah, that about, that, that, that was like what I wanted to cover. Um, still got the spider. I didn't take it out yet. We're kind of busy today. Um, I obviously haven't taken these out since the, I don't, I also don't know what I'm going to do with having this dual tailed. I guess I'm going to pop that back off because there's really no point to having that. <laughs> See, just notice that crap. Um, I'll go to the forums and check that out there in a minute. OAE. I do want to see that. Mark, why haven't you been on the forums lately? What the hell's wrong with you? Chastise you for that. I chastised Dalton for this the other day. I was like, dude, you got to be posting these new ones, especially Shadow. He made Shadow on the fly at lunch the other day. Pretty good little bird. He's got another one he's coming out with too, so. Okay, yeah. Because there's really no point to having two tails on one bird. Um, I haven't thrown the spider. I'll throw the spider. I'll throw it right now. Man, dude. Seriously. This thing is just so stressful. I swear to God, I'm going to take this thing, I'm going to build the next one, and I'm not going to put the folds back here. I'm going to put them in the front and have this free and then see what happens. Ha! Ah! Because I know if you take those folds that you put up in here and put them back there and you let that go free, this won't look like this. I mean, this thing won't even sit down no more. God. I'm going to have to put, like, weight on this. Yeah. Squash it, bitch. Where's my hard drive? I'm not going to do it because I know your spider likes this. But I remember seeing all your freaking spiders and they all look like a Y shape. And I now realize this is why. This is why. <laughs> are you putting these... Oi, are you putting these mups on the biggest birds? Are they, this is... I mean, I've seen Instructables, and I know that I've seen, like, the pods, the M25s and those. I know I've seen those on various planes. I'm assuming they have to be, like, actually, you haven't built them on any smaller birds. But, because, I mean, there's only somewhat small you could do. I don't figure, like, something like a Banshee could hold them. I mean, because Banshee here is, of course, uh, just tops out at just under 7 inches. By, well, 7 by 6. It's a stunt bird. So, it's, you know, it's length to weight, length to width ratio is about the same. Um... And some of that is the tail. If I take the tail off, it would really, really be almost as wide as it is long, which is why it's a stunter. Uh, I couldn't put mops on that. Even if I could put mops on that, why would I put mops on that? It's a stunt plane. It'd be interesting to see what it would do, but I'm not going to do that. I definitely want to put it on the glider and something like this thing, but this is experimental on its own. I've never built a Banshee this big before. <laughs> Ironically enough, this is one of the very few planes that when I build it this size... It does the same thing it does at that size. Phases have done that. Javelin has not done that. Wind cutter, the wind cutter family, or wind cuter if you're, you know, from Louisiana and Georgia area, um, it doesn't do that. <laughs> um, what was the other one? Uh, Nova didn't do that either, but Supernova does, which is why Supernova is now my medium bomber. They somebody makes glow in the dark stickers. And <laughs> also, you guys, all right, it's a little bit of something else, too. Somebody does make glow-in-the-dark stickers. It's interesting you point that out, because I know maybe some people make glow-in-the-dark stickers. I, I guess you've heard that somewhere before. Oh, I don't have the batteries in them. Okay, but you see this? You guys can see this? I got these. Out of all places, the 
model railroading show, the train show, which I frequent. Um, these are nano LED lights. They use a battery, um, like the watch battery, the CR625. And this one is completely built, although they're tangled up right now. I think Cat might have been up there. Um, there we go. They're completely built, so they have the on-off switch, they have the battery, and then the nano chips. These, these lights are extremely small. Even if I show you, you can't see. Oh, yeah, you can pretty good. That's the light. Um, there's almost no weight. I wouldn't exactly put these on a plane like this, but this size can hold them with no problem. Now, these are just temporarily fused. All I did was twist. They are not soldered. They are not taped because I didn't know where to put these yet. But lights like this, I can see on a plane, and I can see that they would have absolutely no problem carrying these with no little to no weight penalty. So glowing the dark stickers, boy, that's a thing of the past. I think we can put lights on these birds. And I'm quite anxious to do this, especially with this one. Because, yeah, these are constant burning lights. These are warm glow yellow. Um, and, of course, because the tin to copper, it's on the inside as the core, will definitely hold a shape. So I could probably get them to sit on the wingtips like they should and put the battery in the nose, which, again, with a plane with this kind of weight distribution, won't be that big of a deal. So, yeah, um... This is one of the things we've always talked about that we could possibly do. Getting getting lights on them, getting cameras on them. I'm not I'm not going to put a camera on a jab one. Don't ask. Don't tell. Not going to do it because I'm probably just going to destroy the camera, and nobody's going to want to go with that go for that thrill ride. You've seen their flights. What are they going to do? Go straight up and straight down? People are going to vomit. I don't want to watch that. Well, yeah, definitely that. I mean, certain planes that glide for certain durations, but like, I don't know. This is not. Right. Okay, I showed you this. I'm just detailing. That's the nano chip. Better than the light? No. They call that the nano. They call this one the micro. This one's bigger, but this one is a red flasher. So, again, these are the lights I'm going to play. Fudge me, doodle bars. I gotta make sure this is the right one. Let me open up my ammo case. Okay, I'm going raw deal down here. Sorry, I'm getting distracted. This wasn't supposed to be part of the show. <laughs> Whatever. Well, that battery is just dead. Or my line's not proper. That's a possibility. Again, I didn't know where I was going to put these, so these aren't exactly... Oh, great job. But anyway, yeah, glow-in-the-dark stickers would be cool. It'd be like having formation lighting strips on them. I can dig it. Can you dig it? But my battery could be dead. Or I could just be an idiot. Chances are it's not dead. I weeded through these before. This should not be the case. I don't know. It was dead. Because this light... Can you see? You can see, right? Yeah, you can see. It's flash. Well, it was flashing. There you go. It's a flashing red. So if we can get that thing on board. I have to get rid of that battery. Um, if you can get that on board, the planes. Highly recommended. We should probably be looking at that, too. Um, I saw that. And then the other thing, um, talking about that, going, going further in, was the cameras which I also think we're on the verge of doing because cameras have gotten micro small. You guys have seen them. Um, spy cameras, definitely. But there is the Hot Wheels car that carries the camera. There is a pen that holds the camera. And either one of them, if you were to dismantle either one of those and put the camera on board our planes, I'm pretty sure it could be done. So, once again, something else to be thinking about. We should be able to do something like that. Sorry, I'm reading. So the design, the design of the pod, 
like the recent pods were the ones that actually had uh, like they were, they were uh, sorry they were the ones that kind of like diamond shaped your front was pointed your rear was pointed but the older pods were flat backed did you find any difference in those like was one um was one more I would imagine the one with the fairing was probably less drag, but it may not be so because it depends, depends on how much air was stalling at the back of the flat pod. I'm guessing it could have went either way. I mean, a plane like this, it doesn't affect, but if you've got a three dimensional pod back there with a flat fairing versus a, a rounded or diamond shaped fairing, you're going to be, uh, well, with paper, it's hard to say you could add less drag, with the flat back versus a, a diamond back or a fairing, but I don't know. That's an interesting test. And again, something why you need a, a wind tunnel. I know. See, yeah. I mean, we, and we haven't done the camera. I mean, again, because uh, it's going to have to be a bigger plane. I think that haul, hauls it around with again, less weight penalty. And yet you want to make sure the bigger plane you have actually is capable of flying, say like a phase or a wyvern at least. I'm using mine. Sorry. I mean, this, th the one here, for example, this, this is a phase. I just recently took this one. This is 546. Um, 546 got a whole bunch of treatment. It has, it doesn't have fluff. The, the fin only goes through the back, but this is what I was telling you about Mark. When I was saying the fin should be, you know, that long. Um, it has the folded anhedral tips. Actually, these are split anhedral tips. Um, and it does have the center body hole with flaps. These flaps are adjustable. Um, this goes back to some of my olden days when putting this in, like, I know this is 546. This one was built in, this, Jesus Christ. This one was built in 2007. But um, I had this design, like the holes been since 157 back in 91. That came from burning. But the, the, the hole here is part of the fins engine thing thing. I haven't really had a name for this, but I was playing with it because the engine act, <laughs> engine, this acts as an intake. And I don't know if you can tell because of the lighting scheme, but like if the air goes in, when the intake is open wide, it goes in, flies up through there and actually hits the base of the fin. So it goes into the fin from the bottom. Well, you can't see it because of the shadowing there. This is where the wing pocket starts inside the plane. And then the tail starts there. So air goes in, hits the fin, and then shoots out the back. So it's not exactly an engine because it's got to be fighting when the plane drops. It's not a true intake, but it's close. This thing had a lot of tech on it. This one actually had the canards built in as well. Um, Mark, you probably have seen this thing. Actually, I know you've seen this thing, but um, built in 2007. I know you have, and you were probably pissed at it because it had all the technology on it. But I took the canard off. As a matter of fact, I took the canard off just two days ago. Um, it had a toothpick up here, the flat toothpick this wide, because I had it built in, and you can kind of see the tape here. There's a piece of tape because this line got blast. I'm trying to get the angle right. There's this line here, and then this line here. And all that is is a cut with the X-Acto knife that made that flap come out and it gave it canards on both sides. I took that canard out because this thing doesn't need that much tech. I mean, it's already got this, the, the anhedral tips. This right here, guys, I highly recommend this. Dude, this thing, every, ever since I put these on the birds, even folding them, but splitting them, oh my God, if you can split your hedral tips, man, this adds a whole new dimension to the plane. This thing is like, Amazing when it comes to that. Now that it's taken it off, yeah, without, without the canards and stuff, you kind of get shy about putting holes in the planes, but they really do seem to like a hole in the center of gravity. Marlo used to be able to put staples in there, and I could never get that to work, but I got holes to work. So if you guys try either one, stapling or holes, try them. Please let me know because I'm, I'm of the hole, he's of the staple, and we'll see where it goes. I cannot get you. See, oh, so oh, you've tried it before too. Yeah, split anhedrals, dude. I like the way to split winglets. You call them winglets, whatever. I, I can see that. Um, 
yeah, dude, man, if you can build it on a plane, I highly recommend it. And any plane I've got that's had those, it helped out a great deal. I'm not exactly sure why, but this one is just built to fly though. This thing's got the traditional phase curve. Whoops. See the way that right there back at the tip, they come up. Yeah. Again, Mark, you're familiar with that. And is th this thing is just, this, this has got some decent range to it. Um, <laughs> I've thought about using that power up for the planes. I thought it was, yes, it seemed like a cool idea. I don't know. It also seems kind of like cheating. I really, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I deign to think of exactly how am I going to put it on this and make this fly good. And even if it does, what's it going to do, man? It's built as a stunt plane. If I put FPV on this, you power up FPV on this, is it really going to still stunt? I'm giving it power. So what? I, I don't know. I'm, I'm nervous. I don't really know if I want to waste the time just to find out that it's not turning into something like, okay, if I put it on Javelin, I'll probably break the thing. If I put it on phase, it would work, but phase does so good without anything. Why would I put it on board? If it goes any longer, it'll go into the next state. Mark, you can back me up on that. Banshees, a, a stunt plane, Goblin, any stunt planes you've got. You really wanted to fly around and watch something like that? I mean, you does it really extend every flight or does it depend on the flight of the style of aircraft it is? So, I mean, is already gonna, you're already going to be able to limit it to the kind of plane it's on. Is it going to be on this? Is it going to be on this? Is it going to be on a glider? Is it going to be on a stunter? Is it going to be on an interceptor? Would you want it on an interceptor? Could make the ultra-long-range interceptor. But is that what you're looking for? Again, think about it in terms of combat. If you put power up on a combat bird, you're not going to want to lose it. You throw it into the enemy's plane. Oh, look what I got. No, that's not going to work at all. And again, I understand this is for testing. Who brought this up? Robert brought this up when he said, like, um, you want your planes ready for combat at all times. Because we were talking about shit like this. You're going to put this on a plane, you put, you put all this tech on this plane, it's like, okay, if it goes into combat, you're going to want to lose this plane in combat? No, not really. I'm not going to want to. And then he's talking about having, like, well, you have all your planes ready for combat at any one given time. That's why you have a bunch of planes. That could be true, too. But if you're in the heat of combat, you can't, I'm not going to bring all 400 of my planes out. It's just not going to happen. Chances are I'm going to bring the javelins out until I start winning. Then I'll go get the bombers and start striking you. That's how combat works. Javelins are, the interceptors are out there to beat you off, <laughs> beat you down. Uh, forget I said that. But you take the interceptors, you win the air superiority, then you start striking. Their strikers are what you're beating your, beating down with the interceptors. Okay, yeah, but what if you run out? I mean, there's usually a gentleman's agreement sometimes, or sometimes you have a friend out there who can actually get your planes back once they're used because they're usually on a one-way trip. But if you play with some truly evil people, if you're, if you're going out there in a war with some truly evil people who just take the planes you throw and crush them, you're going to vastly lose some planes in attrition. I'm not willing to lose this bird. You build a basic plane right out there, get the job done. I mean, hell, Lance could come back for me in that kind of situation. I'm just talking about having these planes ready in combat and, and power up, not going on there. Javelins, I might not waste them. I'm not going to waste a phase three either. Not like this. But all in all, these are things to think about. And I only think about it because I've been in a war before. I mean, I granted, I don't think you guys have, but it... it it's just, it's just something you got to consider. We've we've talked about this before, way back in the day, um, about having a attrition squadrons. We call them planes that we'd be willing to lose. And again, it wouldn't be these. So you got to you got to think of the, that too. I'm, that's always in the back of my mind because our core is a core. So yeah I've like I said I've seen the pictures in <laughs> the great Lakes I've seen the pictures um uh, and like even the tutorial like the YouTube video of it and a tutorial on it makes it seem like it can go on probably a plane this size but like full letter size like it would have to be something like Draco or or vortex or or my bulls you know and you can't you I mean I don't know how long that piece is. OAE, do you know how long the piece is on the FPV, on the power-up? Because, I mean, if it's like, if it's anything longer than seven inches, well, I'm going to have a problem. 
I mean, a prop here and then the, or the prop back here. I mean, yeah, it can work. I don't know. I don't know. I I know we can build planes that can use it. It's just, and it, it, it's very interesting to test. Like I have the paper, I have the electric paper airplane launcher. Um, it's kind of funny that it doesn't work with a lot of planes, especially a javelin, because a javelin's just too damn thick. But it does work on others. Um, you'd have to build specific planes to be able to use the power up, and the power ups only just kind of have fun with it, I suppose. But it does make you build planes like this, in which case you can fly them on there. So yeah, I mean, yeah, I I think. We can test them out and see. You can test them out and see. Um, I'd like to see videos of that myself. At least some of our guys, you know. Uh, whatever. <laughs> <This point. laughs> yeah, well, you know. We, yeah, but you didn't have to lose all your javelins in our, in our little mock battle that we had back at Rain Tree, dude. Uh, who used all their planes? That'd be me. Now, granted, most of the javelins came out of here pretty much unscathed, but you'll notice I said most. Some of them I had to retire after that, because a few of the better ones we kept reusing over and over and over again. You're lucky I never put any pins in the nose of those bastards. I'm going to walk around with three, go back home with three planes sticking out of you and say, Mom, this hurts a little bit. Yeah, you know. Thirteen inches long? Holy crap. That's how long this is right now, right here. And that's to the base of this, the flimsy part of the bird, which the prop is in the back of that thing, right? And I see it right. I think the prop is in the back. Whew. Well, we didn't lose the one you spent like three hours climbing the tree for with a basketball. You didn't lose the one you had to climb on the roof for either, or I didn't lose... I know they were mine, but you were willing to go get them. Never forget that. But still, that was on the roof, and that was on that tree. I can't understand why that was. We did lose the one on the tree. I lost, remember that yellow javelin over at the church? I lost the yellow javelin at the church because it went on the church roof. I'm like, God bless. No pun intended. Lost that plane on that. Oh, man. I think, no, didn't entirely lose it. Lost it because it spent the night on the roof. But we went back out there the next day, and I think, or two days later, found in the bushes. So, we got it back, but it was dead. Just like that phase that's over there in Westview right now, dying. Or dead the first night. 13 inches long. Jesus. I, I can't even imagine. I, I can't picture. So, it's going to have to be something like this. It's going to have to be a bigger phase. It's going to have to be at least, at least something like the petrol. Which I'm on the verge of retiring, so can't be that plane. I don't know. You sit well behind the, but the Zeta, the Zeta. Yeah, you said the Omni wing, right? It's like a flying wing. I know it's a bigger one. It's like huge, right? But it's it's well behind the wing, so it's it's kind of like this. I can't. Uh, it can't be this thing. It's just too flimsy back here. Even if I get one, I don't know. I'll think about it. I haven't got it yet. Yeah, it's really funny because I'll use radio control helicopters. I'll use radio control airplanes. I mean, I've got one, two, three, four, five, six sitting right here of radio control drones, if you will. I refuse to call them that. Drones are what the military uses. These are radio control helicopters. But I got like six of them. But I don't count them really as in the force, even though they are based at squadrons. I just clump them all together because I didn't build them. I fly them, but I didn't build them. They're not mine. My designs, our designs are the only ones that go in the core. With the rockets being the exception. Me and Robert had a good talk the other night about rockets and like allowing those in. And we're thinking like, yeah, rockets are cool. Um, but the rockets aren't our design either unless we change them up a little bit. No, like bottle rockets and stuff. I use them, we use them. But Sky Warrior's big too. Is the only time you didn't lose it. I didn't. I didn't say this. The only time you didn't lose anything because you didn't have any planes to lose. I mean, okay, yeah. By the time we went to the tree, yes. But the war in there, dude. What did you have? Like three Dracos, or did you even have those at the time? I don't know. Whatever. Speaking of which, where's your cargo helicopter, Mister uh, Chief of the Helicopter Forces? You are commanding officer of the Helicopter Forces in the Corps. Where are these helicopters? 
<clears throat> still waiting. Still, still waiting. Oh, hey, have you ever built helicopters? Got to talk to Mark here and like get him in on, on board these. He's supposed to be our commanding officer of the helicopter forces because he's the one that brought it up so long ago. I think it was in 2001. He's like, why do we do helicopters? That was 2000. Like, why would we do helicopters? I'm like, I tried them, just didn't really find a use for them. Then he built this big, massive thing, and I built this big, massive thing. The only time I've ever built a helicopter with four blades, damn if I remember how to build it because it was a sheet of paper, and it built four blades on it. The, the epitome of cargo helicoptering. Lost it, and I can't remember how to do it. It was brilliant. I mean, it even had a body could store stuff. But it worked out for us because, again, in a combat situation, which we always got to go to an impact, how would you use them? Because these things are the closest of close range. I mean, what are you going to do? They drop straight down. Blah. Kind of boring. Unless you can actually make it where you can throw it. Okay. Drone helicopters. Yeah. I've seen those. But still, what do they do besides like, okay, let it go and drop like a seed? I mean, you need to be able to throw them like a plane and then they... That's true. That's where we should actually be concentrating anything. Yes, I can pull up the sheet. I think. Should be able to. Um, those helicopters were like this. It's like, why would we use them at all? I mean, that's the closest of close range. You'd have to be over your opponent's territory. Which, again, I mean, no big deal. You could be. I'm not saying you wouldn't be. But why would you go to helicopters? You already have your close range support planes. You're on Spider 29, because I've got number 28. Dude, you should know that. Actually, no, that's not true. You didn't fill it out, did you? Because you built another one after this this one when I built it. So the next one you build should be 30, unless you didn't finish the one we were talking about. I have 28. It's the last one on your sheet. And this shows that you edited it. So 29 should be your next one, unless you finish the one the other night, in which case 30 will be your next one. Tell me. So, like, a mothership kind of situation where the helicopters drop by the plane. Again, a cool idea. But, again, that's like a fire and forget kind of situation. You drop them and, again, I'm sorry, but I always go to a combat situation. I'm in the core. That's what I think of. So, it's a use it or lose it. Use it and lose it situation. If you fly a bomber type of aircraft that releases these helicopters, they go down, they strike the plane for whatever reason, most planes are taken out, but you're not going to get it back. Probably not. So it, 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 it's a valid idea. It's a valid use. It's just, man, I don't know. I It worked out for me and Mark at Raintree because the 233rd was below your 17th. So... Mark, Mark, Mark lived above me in, in a three-story helico uh, <laughs> helicopter base. It was a main base. Rain Tree is a big base now because we're both at it. But I was in a 233rd. He was in the 17th, three stories above me. So his helicopters could fly off his balcony and drop to me. This is actually a good use of the helicopters. You, you, you could attach something onto the bottom of them and give them to your, your friend or your compatriot in the battle, what have you. They can deliver supplies. They can deliver an aircraft. They can deliver material. But, again, that's the only purpose they really serve. I can't see, unless one of us can come up with a design that you can throw and drop. So at least it goes 5 to 10 yards out. Because most standard helicopters are a drop and fall. Which is why we don't explore them that much. I mean, they can be cool. They can be really cool. But... That's all they can do. I mean, you can, you can only glamorize that so much. Twenty nine in green. Yeah, I can do that. Simplistic in design. Like, did you make them like those, those little seeded ones? I've seen those. They look like seeds. Really kind of small, but still have the two blades. I don't like for export. How dare you! <laughs> Gotta move some banshees here.
okay? In green. It's not easy being green. Oh my God, look at you. You actually have four spiders now. Woo! <laughs> Whatever are you to do? You guys are making me hold this in now, almost an hour and a half. This is a longer show than I totally expected, but at least we're keeping it going. It's cool. Still, you know, millennials always think it's boring and cut it off by about, you know, an hour ago. That's the first of your... Are you started? Bradley Electrical, at least you freaking actually are getting Pride Fly started. Hope you've got a box. I'll tell you what, move all your planes out that one box that destroys all your planes and put the Pride Fly in there and then take those out and let them sit somewhere because that's what you need to do. You don't want them destroyed anymore anyway. I can't even tell you how many planes are in my fry fly. It's loaded. I showed you that picture the other day. See, well, gee, isn't that, isn't that ingenuitive? Hurricane and tornado are the choppers. Hmm. We all do that. <laughs> Mine's typhoon and cyclone. I, I sense a trend here. We, we've got to stop thinking, I mean, <laughs> there, there's no better word for them than circular vortex of wind. Vortex, see what I did there, Mark? Um, but, like, really, we could do, like, the army and name them all after, you know, Native American tribes. I don't know. It's funny, like, okay, seriously, we're going to use up all those names really rather quickly. I'm, I'm actually not going to do that anymore. I was thinking about the next one, and I was like, you know what? Screw it. Because if you we name every different helicopter after, you know, like the different styles. I've got 12 in the box. Literally, I've got 12 different designs of helicopter. They're all different. But there's no way I'm just like, because I burned through all those names, and I'd use those two that you just used OAE, and including the two that I have. And I'm, I mean, it's like, okay, seriously. There's really no point. I did learn things, and I wrote what me and Mark were talking about the other night. Like, you can use your paper airplanes. Try not to forget that. So, if they do something, write notes on them. You know, this one sucks. This one's good. This one's wing needs to be trimmed a little bit up. This one's anhedral needs to be trimmed down. Whatever. Write on them. So, anyway, I wrote on these helicopters because I learned a lot about testing these helicopters. Like, if you have a two-bladed, which is the standard helicopter most people build, paper helicopter, they seem to only like the blades to turn one way. If you flip them, like there's one, you flip the top blade, say it's sitting down, you're looking on it, you flip the top blade to the right and the bottom blade to the left, it sucks. It doesn't like that. But if you flip them the opposite direction, they fly. I can't explain that. I don't know why that works. I think it has to do with the flappage that I put on them because mine are not standard. I put a bunch of flaps on them in various locations. So that could be it, but it's, it's it's fun to experiment with them, even though, again, they are practically useless. I can picture doing the same thing that we did back in the war and, like, you know, getting them a little bit of vapors, putting, you know, putting the gas on them, burning them and dropping them over to your adversary. That's some really cool stuff. That, those are the stuff that memories are made of. But um, beyond that, what the hell is the point? This is why I needed Mr. Mr. Commander of the Helicopter Forces, the Vertical Forces, as he is, Covio over there. I needed him to give me the write-up and then make me some designs as to why we need the helicopters. He brought it up 19 years ago. Look where we're at. Do we have them? Not really. Don't even have the camouflage. That's another show. We'll talk about camouflage later. Yes, I did. I'm sorry, I meant to answer you. Um, yes, I did view Hurricane and Tornado because, unlike somebody over there, I do keep an interest in the helicopters again because I'd like to see if anybody's got a different idea as to what they can do, different different designs. If we can ever, if somebody could ever find like the throwing out version that'll drop to the ground instead of just a because everybody can build the damn helicopter that drops to the ground like a seed. But can you make one that you can actually throw and then stop? It's not that hard. I, I think I used to know somebody that did this way back in the day. But, of course, I have done it. That is done and gone. So I don't know what that was. But it is something we, should, we could possibly work on and use. 
Covio, remember Covio, Commander of the Vertical Operations. That's your title in IVPAC, the official one, because you are commanding officer of all vertical forces. You wanted to be, you were the one that brought up her helicopters. The freaking vertical award is named after you for crying out loud. Get cracking. That award is barely given out because there's no helicopters. <sighs> I gotta keep writing. No competition. No competition. Oh, by the way, there's there's this one I could actually here's something we could use this. I can kind of wrap up the show with it. Not that I'm done, I'm just saying. Um the videos and pictures that you guys send are crucial for me to know exactly who gets the award for the quarter or excuse me, the biannual awards or the annual awards. If you have a plane that's flown good, this is why the numbers, the numbering system and the videos and pictures are crucial. Again, okay, I don't need to see the video. I don't need proof. I'm not saying I need proof because we don't want to start a fight amongst ourselves saying like, God damn it, my plane was good. It's because you didn't see it. It doesn't mean squat. I'll believe you. Um, but you need to, the diary, the flight log, and pictures sometimes help. Videos sometimes help. But the diary and the flight log is crucial because you have to know what number did it. And then we have to know how many times it did it. Like my trophy, the best flight of the as of the half a year, but I give it out. You know, you've seen the award sheets. I give it out every end of March, every end of September. But that that goes basically on not just one flight, unless the one flight was simply outstanding. Mark, remember the Venom NG at La Follette? I mean, ain't, nothing was going to beat that. There are certain flights that nothing's just going to beat. But if there are flights that are competitive for these awards, we need to know the numbers, and then we need to know how many times they flew. Because if I've got this one here and it flew great seven times, whereas you got one that flew great nine times, you're going to get the award and I'm not. Because it just had those flights. So, again, the flight log, which is what we use our calendar for, is crucial. So I can go and peruse through that and find out, like, oh, okay, well, he flew Vulcan 15 times and it was golden. And I only flew that phase 563 seven times, well, I guess you're going to win the award. So this is why we need the numbers. This is why we need, you know, flight, like, okay, I took a flight the other day, or I went sorting the other day. Yeah, that, that's why the, we need to know that stuff. Um, it's not just for peace of mind and everything like that. But, I mean, again, I like to know rollout dates. I like to know first flights. And God forbid I have to know the flight days. That's where we keep the flight logs. I still do the... I'm okay. I'm kind of bad. I have the flight log pads. You remember our little memorandum, government memorandums? Thank you for getting me those, Mark. But I have been kind of slacking on my writing. But I have been doing the calendar. So <clears throat> I wish I still had my flight logs from back in the day. Always got to, always got to keep track of that. You want to know how many sorties you flew and exactly which plane did it and how good they did it. <clears throat> I mean, you can always just, like, not tell me, and I'll just, my planes will keep winning the awards. i got no problem with that. <laughs> I mean, I'm like, my planes aren't great. They're good enough. I'm sure if somebody like OAE over there, or Robert, or Ben, or Foldable, or any of those guys, um, Dalton did, you know, like, they got planes, and like, oh, look, this one kicks your ass. I mean, they'll win the award. But beat that Venom flight. You, dude, you've had one. You remember that one that we had back in Brook, Brookwood? Your Thunder, well, that wasn't Thunderbolt. It was like a design off of Thunderbolt. Do you remember that plane that we modified and played with? And that one that caught the thermal and then just kept flying up and up and up? Remember chasing that thing down? Yeah, that plane was God. I don't know what did that. I, it was like lifted by the hand of God. I don't exactly know what caused that. Venom had a little bit of that. But, I mean, it's like it's always one of those flights, those outstanding, like, okay, that might have been its only flight. Maybe it crashed into a pond afterwards. But something like that is worthy of, you know, that's legendary status. Okay, you're going to win the award based on that. You don't have to go like, oh, I flew at 17. Oh, I don't care. That one flight is, is going to warrant it. Like, I mean, retire it the next day if you want to. It's hard to do that, isn't it, guys? Like, you get a plane that has a good flight, and it's like, well, I want more good flights out of it. You're kind of scared. You can either go one way or the other. You can be like, if I fly and lose it, I'm going to be really angry. I'm really sad. 
or I can fly it again because man, that thing was good. Or you can just fly it and say like, this was the best ever. I'm retiring it right now. What do you do? I don't know, but it sure be going to get, going to get that. Oh, <laughs> remember the phase that went into your uh, bramble bushes back there? <laughs> those huge as mean bushes that had thorns all in them. And the phase landed on top of those. Why did those bushes grow to 10 to 12 feet tall? You had to climb bushes that were unclimbable that had thorns on them to get the phase landed on top of them because it flew 70 yards away. I don't know. That was, that was outstanding. That one did win an award. That was 341. Uh, you remember that one too. Because one of the things I learned, one of the things I learned was the notebook, If you, when you get a stack of loose leaf paper, notebook paper, loose leaf, that first one, is like a made out of some kind of amazing bond paper. <laughs> it's not exactly printer paper. It's not exactly worksheet, but it is not the rest of the loose leaf. And usually it has the lines. That sheet of paper is the best sheet of paper for airplanes like ever created. I highly recommend buying like 20 stacks of 300 loose leaf sheets and just using the 30 that you get on the top for planes. They will be the best planes you build. Then you, you tried amphibious designs? Like ones that could land on water? Well, okay, I gotta admit, if you build them like Robert does, where it's entirely laminated, which, again, I again, I, I think those are cool. I don't know if I can do that with mine, because really? Um, they weren't meant to be taped. I definitely like all weather birds, but taping them? Yeesh. Uh, amphibian has they like float not like the one I lost the other day in the middle of the pond did I ever put that up on Facebook I can't remember if I put that up on Facebook but I lost one in the pond yeah that, that thing was golden flew three times last flight middle of the water dead I didn't I don't even I didn't even get it I, I can't get it. it it's gone anyway um and truly amphibious huh did it float or did it just was it a float plane or was it just like, oh, hey, I go on, I can go through the water, come on unscathed. Yay. It would be, those would be the planes we could dedicate for the carrier. <laughs> Remember the carrier, guys? Man, I still kind of want to build that thing. I see absolutely no point to it other than I could say that I did it. But... I mean, it, it still brings me ideas. I don't I don't think we should build a paper boat. Hell, it can't be a paper boat unless it's laminated, a la Robert. But to say that we did it, man, that, that, that could be kind of cool. I don't know. Well, you could, yeah, I couldn't imagine so. The floaty part, the floaty part of the plane would have to be waterproof if, if the other one wasn't. But the whole plane would have to be waterproof because if those floats failed, you're kind of screwed. It would be interesting. I don't, I can see a floaty device. Okay, so the entire plane would have to be laminated, and then there would have to be floats, something to keep it above water instead of sinking. And on top of all that, it would still have to be able to fly. Whew. It's funny because me and Randy uh, of Copeland Industries back in the day, uh, we're the first ones about talking about naval fighters because we, we, we went fishing a lot and we had a pond really close by that ironically was a great place to fly because there was a field next to it. And we always talked about like, what about some naval planes? Can we get some naval planes? Um, we never, it, we did make some that could like fly over ponds safely and we considered those naval variants. But we were also scared to death because they were simply paper. We never did anything special to them. We were like, oh, God, did it make it over the... <sighs> made it over the water. That's as far as our naval adventures went. We never really did float planes or anything. He had an idea for one. He had some idea where the bottom was... Uh, I don't know what he had. He had, like... It looked like a straw, but it was, like, this big around. See that? Yeah, it was, like, this big around. I mean, like, what do you mean the fuselage of that? Like, what if? 
you get to make the wings out of that too? Because unless the whole thing is plastic or something like that, if the wings hit the water, boom, dead, no more plane. And that's when it stalled because I brought that up to him. He's like, that's a great idea, but the, 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 the wings are still paper. He's like, oh, <laughs> he didn't really do anything. Like, I, I think it progressed a little bit because I was like, okay, so maybe we can add a little bit of strikes over here so the rocking motion doesn't get the wings wet. But basically, you're going to have to keep the wings from getting wet. So it, it semi-stalled. We, we worked on it a little bit. But that was the extent of our naval history, other than us trying to build a carrier. I got the ideas. It, like, hear me out on this. Okay, so we obviously ain't taking off from no carriers because we'd have to stand on it. I mean, dude, we're talking about planes that just launch. The only way that launch is by throw, unless you have the power up on there. So it does make it possible. But here's the thing. If you do a carrier and make it out of something, you're just meaning that you can have planes on the carrier. To what point? Are we talking about, again, it's like a transport, so you can have like a squadron of them floated across the pond to where the war is taking place? Yes, that's kind of what I see it. But, man, wine corks had to be heavy. What if they got wet? If they got water oh, man. I bet they floated. But, again, we're talking paper? Were they paper planes? Holy crap. Wine corks. Anyway, um, if it's a big carrier that has used exclusively for transporting planes, possibly the other point would be to say that we can land on them. But again, we have to talk about, like, are any of our planes truly that targetable that we, we can throw and land it somewhere? It's going to land on it was pinpoint accuracy on a carrier, especially if the carrier already has planes on it. I mean, we're talking true naval aviation here. All right, uh, and let me make the addendum to that. We're talking true paper naval aviation. Uh, that makes me a little jittery. I don't know if I trust any of my planes, even Javelin, to do that. And I'm usually pretty trustworthy of Javelin because wherever I throw it, it's going. Um, hell, Javelin hit the boat and sink it. But I thought of all kinds of ways. I mean, I I was really... OAE, you might be been the original to bring this up because I know we talked about carriers like seven years or five, however long the hell it was. Mark, you got involved. Um... I was willing to go all out. I'm like, okay, so um, water bottles. <clears throat> I had water bottles on the brain. I was like, so how can we make water bottles float? Plastic planes, yes, of course. Um, planes would have to be waterproofed, and the boat would obviously have to be waterproofed. So here's what I was thinking. You guys have seen these. Like, If you get the one-gallon jugs of water from the convenience store or the store, um, I can't remember the brand. Somebody's got square versions of those. You cut those in half and then flip them on the side, you, you, you know, whatever, obviously the bottom side. So you get about four of those, put them at the corners to make them a little bit more buoyant, fill the core with styrofoam, and then your top. I mean, you're literally making just that. And then the flat top would be whatever the flat top is made out of, whatever you have. Obviously, it can't be too heavy, but it's got to be waterproof. And then that's the surface. And then I went as far as to saying, like, okay, so the surface is going to have to be grippy and get this stoppy. <laughs> For lack of a better term, it has to have some adhesion. So one thing is the planes don't just slip off or, worse yet, fly off. Now, this is what I was thinking with those is like, if you've got the flat top, I was thinking string all the way across. Say this is the flat top of it, okay? String stapled to either side of the flat top, ran across, you have binder clips at certain intervals, and then the planes attached to the binder clips attached to the string. This way they stay on board the aircraft carrier as it floats. Um, also, it's got to be a softer surface so that if you were to dare and try to throw and land a plane on your carrier, what you could do was install a pin in either in the nose or somewhere along the fuselage, and assuming you could trust your plane enough to nosedive or glide into it, the pin would stick into the deck of the, of the carrier and stay there, hence your landing. Because you really couldn't trust them to glide and hope, well, I mean, if it's high adhesive, I mean, even this, get out of the way. 
even this high adhesive, that stops it pretty good. So something like this would work. But would you feel safer if you had like, I don't know. I mean, you could obviously build a bubble. You could build like a, a convertible top that's like it's got some curves to it and the plane could just be thrown into the pocket and there it's on the carrier. Um, but I mean, like I had the ideas. I mean, these were a bunch of my ideas. It could work. And I mean, it could be really cool, but I just like, you're just really building it to say you built it because what purpose would it serve other than transporting planes to, you know, the front lines? I mean, we could build it. I think we all have to get together and build it. I mean, I don't know exactly how we would make it, but I think what all of my ideas on there would fairly much have to be on it in some way, shape or form. You could possibly build like, um, my little area, the front end, like you're making it like a real carrier. The front end's got the strings with the binder clips holding three planes down. For example, another row back here with another. And then behind them, you have the plastic cup with the highly adhesive back. So when you throw it on board, they just land into it and stick. And they don't interfere with the planes already on the front. Uh, basic stuff. <laughs> but uh, I noticed neither one of us have ever built a carrier, though. But I figured this was going to take all of us together to come up with. So, But I do, I do have the write-ups myself. I have talked this out, and I've, you know, I mean, I haven't tested them, but I'm ready to do it if anybody wants to try it. So tail hooks could work, okay? Yeah. Oh, well, again, yeah. If you've got something in the bottom, like the pin, like a tail hook, something that would act like that, just so long as you can grab the surface, we could even make it like the strings in the back and make it like a rester landings. But again, you better have a pinpoint accurate bird that you're ready to do that with. We're going to have a lot of planes in the water. This would be really funny to go somewhere instead of flying and like seeing like there's one time my mom came home from work when I was a kid. I was like 14 and <laughs> she came home and I had like 42 planes on the roof. I was just upset. I was like, dude, I threw, I had a bunch of planes out there obviously. And <laughs> yeah, it was ridiculous. I had a bunch of planes out there and after the fourth one landed on the roof, I just got upset. And I just chunked all of them up there. I was like, this is ridiculous. Fine, screw it. She came home and she was like, um, what's that? <laughs> That's literally what she said. She poured, She looked to the front of the house and said, what's that? I'm like, I just kept losing planes on the roof. None of those were like anything. They really weren't. There may have been, this was, I think, 88. So there may have been early precursor javelins out there, probably an Osprey or two probably a phase or two, but the bulk majority was experimental. So, and I will add that a few of those came down before the night fell. So they actually survived, but this was nighttime in South Carolina. Yeah. Pretty much at least meant the night they were dead. They all came down because the house didn't have a front gutter. Uh, and they were all pretty much dead, but it was funny. But again, stands to reason. I was just thinking like, I kind of went off track, but it'd be funny if you came out there to a body of water that had 42 planes floating on it. Because none of them hit the carrier. And somebody comes up to you and it's like, what's that? <laughs> I mean, dude. Oh, so you had, okay, so basically it was kind of like this, but you had like something down here that acted as a hook jutting out of the fuselage or cut into the fuselage. I mean, that would be easy to do. Like any one of these, you cut the slant up. So it, it slants like up here. I am really not getting this light, am I? But if it cuts up like here, so you work into the slant, and then this comes down, and then you have your hook. Yeah, I can see that. But anyway, you're going to have to do it. I mean, if we really were serious about this thing, again, just to say we would, we have done it. That's that's all it would be for. I <laughs> all of us live so far apart. We need to make sure we get other members in around us so that we can have you know, like a, a comrade to fight with so that we could be sending him frontline stuff or he could be sending us frontline stuff with the big transports with a big carrier. Yeah, it'd be really cool to send this thing across the Pacific just to see if it lasted. Now, wouldn't it? Totally encapsulated. There's eight planes in here. Fly them when you get there, please. You're giving me ideas. I had a feeling that's where you were going with that. So, you know, kind of like a spider. 
not exactly like a spider because spider, of course, does it the other way. But yeah, I know what you mean. I do know what you mean. So it's just something to play with. One of these days, one of these days, I'd kind of, like I said, I'd kind of like to see a carrier. I still get that picture of the one when we started it out of that paper carrier that they built, which was kind of cool, but that's just a concept because obviously it would never work. He built it entirely out of paper and it did carry paper planes, but they were all pretty small. So it would never really work. I remember that picture. He even had an island. I think if you Google it, you still find it. But it's like, what's the point? You can have tiny little people in there guiding planes around? No, you don't need an island. You just need a flat top. Someplace to hold and land. I'm thinking practical here. Ugh. Anywho. Mark, you built a bunch yet? I expect like four of them to be done at least. You build slow. I mean, yes. Has my quality has gone up. Uh, my building has gotten slower. But, but, I'd still probably have a few more than you would by this point. <laughs> of course, then again, I got to give you some credit. You don't remember how to build half of your clients. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You remember to build most of them, but this is why I keep saying you really got to do that because just get 20 of each plane in your pry fly. That's it. That's the challenge. Get 20 of each of your planes in pry fly. We'll be taking up no space. You can tuck them inside each other. <laughs> Number two. That's a new design. Well, you got an idea. That's cool. Robert asked me about why we haven't used the old bodies much. Because I put up that video of the old body flights. Especially that cool little one that I've got. And like, why? I don't know. Because they're hard as hell to fly. I mean, they're really, really cool. Especially if you can get a tail fin on there. If you haven't noticed, I'm obsessed with fins. But I really kind of am obsessed with the old bodies. It's just getting them to work and then getting them to fly peeves me. Because it's like, you, you know... Freaking flat fuselages are built to hold. And old body is like any bit of pressure and you can't do it. And like, okay, so you chunk it and it's like, eh, they don't fly very far. They don't fly very good. Maybe that would be a great uh, power-up use. Maybe power-up would go on those really good. I don't know. So you actually put folding wings on the carrier plate. See, you went all out. No wonder it was called the Seahawk. It was just ready for boat travel. You put you put a tail hook on it. You put folding wings on it. Okay. Okay. But see, that's just for fun. I mean, it's not like there's, again, little people on the boat like saying like, okay, you landed it. Come on. Fold the wings. Let's go we'll store you over here. No, you're already going to have to have it on boat or you're going to have to fly it onto the boat and it's got to take care of itself. So again, Naval plane, in theory, great idea. Naval plane in practice, eh, not so much. Other than the fact you can throw it into the water, it'll survive. There's really no point. Although, again, going back to what I was saying before about like making the boat, if you had an old body or even if you had a flat body and put like a thin strip of styrofoam, styrofoam floats, it's an easy solution to getting the plane staying up and light, I might add. You could actually... You guys, oh, Jesus, this keeps giving me ideas. I suppose what you could do to make a plane float is after lamination, because you have to take care of the paper, you could add a styrofoam bumper, if you will, onto the bird, onto any bird. Like, if you could cut it, you, you get your styrofoam cutting material. I do have a styrofoam cutter. Um, and add, like, a bumper, like, you could add, like, just the leading edge. Or the anhedrals, like you could block the anhedrals, but you could put the thin slit, get it on there, and like, you know, fusion it, fuse it, sorry, bad word, fuse it to the paper, and then just having that little bit of styrofoam, there you go, that would keep the plane afloat. It would just be a matter of fine-tuning it so that it would still be aerodynamically feasible to carry it on board. I mean, the leading edge is the best example, you wouldn't put it on the trailing edge, it's just dumb. And the anhedrals, you wouldn't want it, like, you'd have to cut it to make it thin, and you definitely have to make it so you could put it on board the plane. But the addition of little pieces of styrofoam, yeah, you could block it out. You could put, like, two blocks here in the easiest carriage on any plane and make it float. 
That's a hell of an idea. I have these in styrofoam. I should try that. God, why am I worried about naval planes? I can't even get regular planes. Uh, anyway, Mark, you should be listening to this. It keeps raining over there. You're the one who needs to be building planes that can last in water. Just here's the easy way out. Do like Robert does. Just laminate the hell out of all of them. That way you can just go out and fly at any time. Why the plastic planes you just told me about? Yeah, just plasticize the mothers. I'm checking it. I'm checking it. You know, if I type in OAE Starhawk, the first one that comes up is Starhawk Comics. There you are. Oh, Seahawk's a kite too, huh? Yeah, see, you can't do... <laughs> you canceled the aircraft. Poor handling was displayed. Well, of course, because if you're going to be able to float, fold them... <laughs> all you can do is fold them a few times before, like, well, that fold's done. But you don't have to retire them. You would just know that it's limited use. It's like, okay, this is uh, done after its 17th use. Because the folds have taken it. Oh, my God. The planes hit the monitor so bad. The monitor's are dense. I told you it was a big, big thing. I don't know if you guys, again, I pointed this out to Mark. You guys can see this. These dents were caused by the crashing of the planes of the day that destroyed my hard drive. Uh, yeah. Dude, I... Okay, forgive me. It's been a while since I looked, but you're right. Starhawk does look a lot like... Well, it looks somewhat like... I'm not going to say a lot. It looks a little bit more like Goblin. Matter of fact, I'd venture to say they're probably similar in build, but I do the slant extremely high and give it a way bigger tail. It was a good plane, though. Dig those pods, man. Dig those pods. Huge freaking pods. It's like, what do you put in those pods? Paper clips? Staples? A whole bunch of stuff? Do you, either you guys still have, do any of you people in general, still have your literature on aircraft? Because um, my library, I'm just asking, my library on paper planes recently expanded, so um, I need to reacquire a few more. Um, some of the ones I had when I was a kid versus, and some of the ones I can get now. I remember one of the first models I ever built, um, paper models, that is, was the A4 Skyhawk, and it did look exactly like an A4, and then I burned it. It was so much fun. I love burning. Um, I'm probably pyro, but what what does it matter? Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's. I'm just wondering, like, if any of you guys have any of the books or something like that, because I got a bunch of them, and I usually like just like you guys. If, if you guys have something that's interesting, I will integrate it into one of my one of my designs or a newer design or something like that. But I'm never going to steal your designs. I'm just going to borrow the tech. But that's why I got the literature, too, because I'll stumble across something that's like, hey, that looks pretty cool. What do I do on a phase? Because that's usually where my programs start. Not where they finish, but that's where they start. And every now and again, I just come up with something brand new. But like Mark likes to point out, yeah, I don't ever build new things. I just, like, modify the hell out of, like, current designs until they're, like, not in their own roles anymore. Surprise Javelin hasn't turned into some kind of long-range glider myself. <laughs> if you don't want it to fly nose first into the ground right away simple answer put flaps into the back of it and tilt them up right away that way it won't fly nose first into the ground but of course it's also indoor flights and believe it or not a lot of indoor flights start out that way nose first into the ground yeah it happens a lot because indoor air has a tendency to want to do that so it happens. It just happens. I mean, dude, quite a few of mine do that. Which is another reason why I think first flight, usually I don't count first flight until they go outside. Because inside is, yeah, inside is controlled environment. So you're getting different flights anyway. But also, yeah, a lot of the flights suck because that controlled environment usually sucks. 
I mean, they always talk about like, you know, Takeo san winning the uh, or owning the duration, you know, Guinness Book World Records flight duration, which he doesn't anymore. I think John does. Although John kind of cheated by having somebody throw it for him, which is, a, again, still a good idea. I mean, if you got somebody that can throw better than you, go ahead. But it's inside controlled environment. Why do they not measure it for outdoors? Because there's so many variables? Bah humbug. I think it's better that way because if you can beat the variables, then you have truly built a better plane. I mean, I think anybody can probably fly, pl get the plane built the right way that you fly it indoors and it's not going to suck. Beat the outdoor variable and then fly it. I mean, because I've seen a lot of people's flights outdoors and a lot of people's flights, I mean, I'm sorry to say this, but a lot of people's flights outdoors suck. Even when they go, even when they go like really high, I mean, a lot of these dudes like to take them like up on a skyscraper and throw them down. And yeah, I've seen good ones, but I've seen just as many bad, you know? So it's like, it, I think the real challenge is to get those things fixed. Dude, these roundels are hot. Um, can't tell me that don't look cool. That looks cool. Looks like it belongs, brother. Anyway, um, yeah, I was like, beat the elements, beat the wind, beat thermals. Actually, don't beat them, use them. If you can use a thermal, you're golden. But whatever. So anyway, peeps, look, I'm going on two hours. I got to wrap this up. I didn't intend this to be this long, but I have fun with y'all. Hope y'all have fun. Hope y'all got some information. Um, let's work this stuff. Uh, Give me some videos, please. Get, get me some videos. Post them up there. Anna. Post them up to our site. You can do it. You guys can log in. Anybody else wants to get in? Give me your videos. I'll log them in there. Um, get any rollouts online. Please, on the calendar if you can. Uh, post up to the easy and if you can. Um, you too. You should be able to. Uh, I might have to use the, the login stuff. Anyway, um, try to get the roundels if you want. I, I can get you the templates if you need them. I'll get you the rectangular templates if you need them. Hell, I'll give you the sheets if you want them. I mean, like I said, I'm going to have enough. I ordered the packs. I could have said this before. I ordered the packs. Here's the Avies right here. It's 94503 for the circular ones, which are half-inch diameter round labels. But I do have the 94204s. These are half inch by one and three quarter inch rectangular labels. Um, I got 10 sheets, 600 labels on there. I got 25 sheets, 3,850 labels. So needless to say, I think my planes are going to be covered. Uh, and yeah, these are going to be, these will be really cool. I think it'll be a nice addition. Um, these are this big between my thumbs. You can't see that because it's blinding you. They are, like I said, one and three quarters inch. I'm hoping to get probably two of the flags on them, cut them in half, put them on the bigger birds because they will be substantially bigger on the smaller planes. So anyway, uh, yeah, it's a cheap way to get them. It didn't cost much to print. didn't cost much to acquire these. And so by all means, and I mean, dude, like OAE, you'd like to print up squadron numbers, squadron names, patches. I do too. I haven't showed you some of my artwork. I'll try to get you some of that. Because uh, I've had some of my squadrons have had artwork since basically I've had squadrons. Um, do what you can. Um, work those designs, Mark. Get us some planes and pry fly, dude. I'm, I'm happy you got another design. Kind of sorry that it sucks, but what can you do? If it doesn't, if at first it doesn't succeed, failure is an option. <laughs> <laughs> you did build 30. Want me to put that in there? I'll put that in there. I got you. That's what I'm here for. OAE, thanks for joining us. Mark, thanks for joining us. Um, everybody else, if you were there, hope you enjoyed the show. I know it was a little bit long, but that was their fault. <laughs> Wasn't my fault, but we had fun. We got some good knowledge. I got some good news out there. That's really all that matters. 
Um, and like I said, just remember, keep them flying. I'm out.